Okay, once again, I want to welcome you to today's tutorial. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Mtale, as you can see it written down there. And uh, I want again to thank you for always sharing and liking my tutorials on YouTube. I continue to encourage you to continue sharing. You share, you like, and subscribe to my channel so that you can receive the subsequent tutorials which will be coming. Uh, today we are going to continue from where we stopped last time. You remember we were talking about tissue processing. And today we want to continue with the automatic tissue processor. Last time we ended, uh, we went through the process uh, of tissue processing. We went through the first steps. Uh, we talked about fixation. Uh, I believe you know what now fixation is. We went to dehydration. We discussed dehydration properly. Uh, we went to clearing, I went to embedding, and I think that's where we stopped that time. So today we want to continue with the tissue processing, and this time we want to look at the automatic tissue processor. Yes, before the advent of technology, uh, we used it to do tissue processing manually, but you remember the chemicals that you are getting in touch with xylene, most of the agents are corrosive, some are carcinogenic, and uh, even time, you know, human error also was a challenge. You can forget to change the tissue from one liquid to another, but with automation, it simplifies work. One, it uh, actually shortens the turnaround time, and even these automatic tissue processors have also been changing as technology changes, they also change. So we have uh, the image that we can appreciate on our screen now. This is one of uh, the tissue processors we are going to discuss and see how it works. But there has been advancement in technology that we have other tissue processors which are more robust than this one. Uh, the one we see in the image here is a tissue processor. It's an automatic tissue processor. But uh, with this one, we shall realize that for this case we shall have the tissue in the cassette moving from one bucket to the other, from one bucket to the other, taking it through the process uh, like what we've been discussing before. We we'll look at the process of fixing. One of the beakers must be containing formalin, and from formalin we shall go to the dehydrants. And last time we talked about the alcohols. So after the alcohols, we need now to clear to remove the alcohol. So we shall transfer uh, our tissue to xylene and uh, then from xylene it will be now transferred to an infiltrating uh, agent and that's uh, probably molten wax. So that's the process uh, through which the tissue will be moving. But in these two processors we realize just like I mentioned before that the difference is one of them uh, employs the movement of the tissue itself from one beaker to the other and then we shall see that in another processor we shall have only the liquids or the fluids when the tissue is in one position in the processing chamber and it's only the fluids which are pumped into the chamber for an appropriate time and after uh, the appropriate time is done they are removed cleaned and then another reagent is pumped in. So let's continue and see what these processes are. So uh, if we can remember the principle uh, of tissue processing uh, from the beginning what we mentioned. So the major principle of tissue processing one is to actually remove the water which is in the tissue which does not mix with the embedding medium. Because what we need at the end of the day is to have the tissue embedded or impregnated so that it can be sold enough to enable sectioning to take place. So it is therefore removed through dehydration. Hence, dehydrating agents remove water from tissue. But however, these agents are not miscible with embedding media, so they are removed from the tissue and replaced with the clearing agent. And then we talked about this, and this was xylene for that case. And then clearing agents are miscible with embedding media. However, they are also removed through impregnation so that we can have homogeneous uh, sectionings. So the types of uh, 
tissue processors we have like the one I showed you which was actual on uh, our first screen that uh, the first slide we displayed is what we call the tissue transfer or the open system or it can be called the deep adjunct tissue processor so just like the name says the name goes tissue transfer like i mentioned before in this case we shall have the tissue being transferred from uh, one container to the other so the open uh, tissue transfer processor uh, this is where uh, technology i think advancement started from and the, this is the first automation which replaced the hand processing in histot histology laboratories Open processors transport tissue cassettes which are loaded in the basket through stationary containers on the processing reagent. So in this case we have the I mean, we, we have the tissue transferred. These tissues remember they are loaded in the cassette. We talked about this when you're talking about uh, uh, tissue processing. After grossing, we pick pieces of the tissue, then we put them in the cassette. And then we put them in the baskets and take them to the machines for processing or process manually just in case there is no automation so for this case for the open processor uh, this transports the tissue into the cassette which is loaded on the basket through the stationary containers on the processing uh, with the processing reagents so the containers themselves are stationary they don't move but it is the tissue which is going to move into the respective containers so early models used uh, a notched clock disk to electronically control time and the agitation occurred by mechanical raising, uh, raising and lowering the basket within each reagent container actually if you, you can access if you, you from wherever you are if you can access but uh, for the students of Mbara University we shall go to the lab and look at we should go to the pathology lab we have this open system the open transfer and then we shall look at how actually it works we shall look at uh, the notched disks which are, are used to control and with the the advanced methods uh, the advanced technology now it has a chip which can actually control uh, the timing control the time and the temperature uh, automatically and for it it may not need this uh, uh, manual notch uh, disk no it is full automated and can use the automation fully but for this one this is uh, all the technology where we used to use the notch t clock disk actually it can still be used now and agitation uh, was achieved by mechanically raising and raising the baskets in the reagent actually that's what there is that upward up and low movement of the tissue in the cassette to agitate and we remember this one we said it facilitates or it increases on the rate of fixation in the first case and then tissue processing so continuing we look at the components of the automatic tissue processor <coughs> and one we look at the body and we said this is made up of a metallic material which surrounds the timing mechanism of the machine it also made up of the cylindrical or the circular plate and uh, this sits on the body we shall see what we are talking about <coughs> this sits on the body of an automatic tissue processor and it is on this that the beakers sit the beakers where the reagents are put and where tissues are transferred respectively to complete the cycle of processing so the plate is made up of uh, corrosive resistant material and the purpose of this is to resist the corrosion to happen because we remember very well during our discussion we said some of these chemicals we use like xylene formalin and so they are corrosive and if they are on uh, materials which are not non-corrosive they can actually erode we saw uh, somewhere that uh, some reagents actually when they get in touch with the plastics they cause corrosion and wearing away of some of these parts so it is appropriate 
that the plate is made up of corrosive resistant material to avoid such incidents from happening. So we have beakers and then the wax bath. So beakers, this way we are going to have our formalin uh, for fixation and it's in these beakers that we are going again uh, to have our dihydrants and then the clearing agents uh, and the, these beakers most of the time are transparent that you can easily see uh, and they are, you look at uh, the, the chemicals in there to see they also help you to determine whether they have been overused when you see turbidity in them or you see them changing color so they are always clear uh, and transparent beakers and then the wax bath are not transparent and these are two in number and they are different from the rest of the beakers in that for these ones they are also attached to a heater and they heat up because they contain uh, the infiltrating reagent and this is the molten wax so they must be kept at a temperature which is higher to keep the wax molten so that it can be able to penetrate the tissue uh, very well. So that's where infiltration takes place in the wax bath. So they can easily be identified on the tissue processor when you look at them. In most cases, they are not transparent, but they are made of metallic cases and the temperatures are high because they are attached to heaters or an electric heater. So both of these are colorless and it is in this that the tissue processing fluids are placed. They are arranged in a clockwise uh, direction from beaker 1 to 12. So beaker 1 to 12, uh, the arrangement is in a clockwise manner, but you find that either in beaker 1, you may, you may, in beaker 1, actually not either, but in beaker 1, we have 10% uh, formalin, and we know the purpose of that is to fixing. We continue fixing the, 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 the tissue during tissue processing, even when you have actually picked it when it is fixed, it is advisable to fix it. You always start with the fixative and we have uh, the fixing reagent in the tissue processors and that is a formalin. And again, apart from mixing, uh, it is used in the uh, in delaying. Like for example, you may not be going to be available or to operate the machine either through overnight and to avoid leaving the tissue staying longer in some reagents like for example in um, alcohols you know when they stay there for a lot of time in those dihydrants it will cause over hardening of the tissue so leaving them in the formalin is better so it is it can be delayed there even overnight and then you continue with the process or when you're using these automatic tissue processors you can actually set the time and you program yourself knowing that maybe you would be in the lab early in the morning maybe later at around nine in the morning or eight so you can set longer time in formalin so that the tissue stays there longer in formalin because when it stays longer in formalin it cannot be affected as much as when it stays throughout the, the, the night in xylin or in alcohol the effect would be so much so it's always proper to leave it in formalin so let's talk about these beakers these beakers from number one to six this one contain uh, alcohol in an increasing uh, concentration remember uh, I said in the beginning that beaker one may contain formalin so depending on how you're using the machine uh, you can set your own policies in the lab in the first case so this may not be uh, a must that it has always to be so in as much as we know that the process we are starting with the we want to dehydrate and remove water in the tissue just like I mentioned before you may need to delay the process and how you're going to delay the process is by keeping your tissue informally you don't remove them there and you put them and you leave them just on the table no so under circumstances that you are around and you don't need any delay. So container number one to six may contain alcohol at increasing concentrations. You remember in our previous presentations, we also put this clearly that we don't dehydrate very fast. Because when we dehydrate so quickly, we may actually cause 
artifacts in the tissue which will not be good so we must do the process gradually starting with, starting with concentrations which are lower 70 75 80 and we continue up to absolute alcohol then we realize that in uh, container number 8 to 7 this will contain absolute concentrations of a dehydrant or a drinking agent and this is alcohol for this case so from 78 i mean 70 75 80 then we have two beakers of absolute alcohol and now we are completing our dehydration and then when we get to beakers number 10 uh or oh, 9 and 10 not 10 to 9 because we don't count the other round but from 9 to 10 this one is actually contain the clearing agent and this all that we know that this is xylene the xylene which is going to be contained in this because 9 and 10 so the purpose is for clearing is removing the dehydrant then we get to beaker 11 and 12 and just like i said earlier before that these are unique in that they contain the heating element for purposes of impregnating mm -hmm. they are molten the wax and keep it at a temperature higher than its melting point so that this wax can be able to penetrate the tissue well uh, we have the transfer arm just like we said that now uh, we mentioned that the tissue is going to be moving from one beaker to another beaker the beakers are going to be stationary uh, on the surface uh, of the tissue processor the one we said it is anti-corrosive but now these tissues have to move from one beaker to another so how are they going to move we have the transfer arm a compartment or a component of the machine which actually after a specific period of time that is set like for example if we say it's going to move from formalin to uh, 70% uh, alcohol in a period of an hour. So after the set period is done, this transfer arm will lift the cassettes uh, in, in, in the baskets. It will raise it up, lift it up, and then move to the next beaker, which where the, the, the tissue is supposed to go. So the transfer arm, its purpose is for moving the tissue from one tissue processing fluid to another. So it is on this arm that the lid of the 12 beakers are attached. This is better appreciated when we look at these beakers practically and then we see how they move. So the arm has an attachment which attaches itself to the lid and this lid is attached to the basket in which the cassettes are put. So when time is due, it lifts itself up from one fluid container and carries it itself to another container transferring the tissue from one container to the other so the transfer arm rises up just like i've been saying and turns clockwise then moves down thus transferring the tissue from one fluid to another so the arm also has two unique leads that contain hooks and the an electric motor which helps in the movement when it, it, it when it moves or when it rotates it causes the movement or the motion from one position to, to the other thus transferring the tissue from one container to the other it is on these hooks that the tissue processing basket that contain the tissue cassettes are placed and uh, this is meant to ensure proper adaptation and suspension of the tissue during processing remember one of the factors that we mentioned in tissue processing and fixing some time back uh, for those who have been following my tutorials we said one of the factors is suspension if the tissue is suspended very well in the fluid uh, in the fixing fluid or in the processing field then we are bound to get good results other than when it is placed at the bottom and one surface of the tissue may not actually be in uh, touch with the, with the fluid and may not be fixed well or it may not be dehydrated well and you remember all these have effects on the final result so we have an image here of the transfer uh, the tissue transfer process 
so it has different control mechanisms but if we can um, point uh, on some so in this pro processor or oh, just like i've been mentioning we can appreciate the, the the beakers so this is a beaker where i'm putting the cursor if i can get a pointer and then uh, you point on some so these are beakers this is a beaker here and this is also a beaker you can see number two this is a beaker number three beaker number four here and uh, just like we said they are arranged in a clockwise yeah direction so we this is beaker number one this beaker number two beaker number three and the beaker number four moving around and then uh, we can see these ones which are this is where we have the molten wax and this is where bedding takes place with impregnation that's where impregnation takes place and these ones are the ones which are attached to a heating element so other control mechanisms are here we can see the switch we can see the light which indicates that the uh, the tissue processor is on and we can use these ones to set the time uh, on when to the, 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 the tissue should spend in uh, one uh, beaker before it moves to another one. We talked about a plate which is non corrosive, and is this one here? We can see it is actually coated with a non corrosive uh, element so that uh, when these chemicals drop on it, it cannot actually corrode, it keeps intact there. And again, we have uh, the arm. The arm is uh, here, which keeps moving up and down. It keeps moving the, the, the cassette uh, in, the, in the basket up and then transfers them to the next beaker. And again, it lifts them up, transfers them to the next beaker. So the entire thing here moves, the upward one. This will keep moving, but the beakers will remain stationary. So that's what the transfer tissue processor looks like. So we're looking at the timing mechanism and we see how it works. So we say this contains the notched disc, uh, timer, and then the metal coil. So notches are cut on the disc depending on the time interval to be spent in each fluid. Because each fluid will need each specific time in which the tissues will have to spend therein. And these are cut out in an anti-clockwise uh, direction so that as uh, the, 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 the tissue move this one will be moving in anti-clockwise anti uh, direction and will be able to determine the time when the tissue is supposed to be transferred to another and again uh, it, it, when it reaches the, the notch again it will be transferred to another so when the metal coil comes in contact with the smooth surface of the disc the transfer arms remains stationary so when it remains stationary it means the tissue is going to remain now in that particular fluid for a particular period of the set time when it is on the flat surface and when the metal pole comes into contact with the notch on the disc then it becomes depressed it becomes depressed so the notch is not flat and when it becomes depressed, there will be movement. When there will be movement, till again it reaches a flat surface. So this sets the transfer arm into motion when it reaches the notch, into motion in that it raises up and it turns moving the tissue basket from one reagent to another. And the notch disc moves clockwise. The metal pole again comes into contact with the, the smooth part of the disc, making it flat and holding the transfer arm at its respective position for a certain or for a specific period of time. That is it. And again, when it reaches the notch, there will be uh, raising up and moving into the second or the next beaker. So it is used in circumstances where the lab personnel will be off duty for some time like for example over the weekend and in public holidays so when this mechanism is engaged the metal pole is moved away from the disc 
and the processing is delayed for the desired time like for example 24 hours uh, 96 minutes and on but remember what i said in the in the beginning that we need to be uh, knowing where we need to delay our tissue processing from we cannot keep uh, our tissues in for 24 hours in alcohol so this specifically must be in 10 percent for more for i mean formally uh, in a preservative that's where we are only going to keep our tissue that's where we are the delay mechanism is going to work we shall not keep our tissues in xylene for 96 hours otherwise the uh, effect will be devastating on our tissue and we may not get results that we need so that's why uh, in beaker one or even in beaker two depending on how the lab sets its policy we put formalin in there specifically for delaying and for the delay mechanism to be effective because we cannot delay our processing mechanism in alcohols they will actually destroy the tissue it cause a lot of uh, hardening of the tissue which can cause sectioning it can cause shrinkage of the tissue and many other uh, effects which may happen to the tissue so the delay mechanism is used to prevent the tissue uh, from being exposed to high temperatures like for example 50 uh, and 60 degrees above for long as this result to tissue brittleness and hardness still you remember when we talked about the bath where we have the molten wax and we said these ones are attached to a heater so still where we delay we do not delay uh, the mechanism when the tissue has reached uh, the impregnation uh, chambers where this bath have uh, temperatures which are high melting the wax because once they remain there for long your tissue will instead be cooked and when you get cooked tissue the results will not be good still so when the delay mechanism is used the first concentration of a dehydrating agent uh, are replaced by 10 percent buffered formalin such that instead of being exposed to wax for so long the tissue is just fixed and this is what we've been saying all the time so we have another mechanism and then this is the alarm and i think when we had the alarm we know what it means the purpose of it is just to alert that maybe you have come to the end of the process so at the end of the process when the tissue reaches the last wax bath an alarm is made to alert the technical person to remove the tissue and proceed to embedding so the alarm is simply uh, put there to warn and to alert us that the process has come to an end please come and remove the tissue and then you continue with the subsequent procedure that are remaining so we also have safety devices yes and this ensures that after the last wax bath the tissue is held in station 12 until it is removed and not accidentally taken to station one so once it reaches position two that means position 12 yes the safety device comes into place and this one will prevent further movement from position 12 to position 1. You remember in the position 1 you have formalin and in the position 12 you have molten wax. It is already embedded. So when it goes to position 1 and 2 or 3, it will be again taking itself back into steps 1 of processing and this will interfere with the process and we may not get, actually we shall not get the results that we intend to get so away from uh, the open system let's now look at uh, the closed fluid transfer processor and just like i mentioned before i said in this uh, processor this is where the tissue is in one position and it is the fluids which are transferred uh, the tissue is kept in the processing chamber and the fluids are pumped in periodically depending and sequentially uh, depending on the process and the process actually does not change the steps do not change irrespective of the method you're using if it is fixing fast and dehydration coming fast that's how it will be irrespective of the type of processing used whether it's manual or using the open the deeper dark or using the, the closed system what changes is how it is done uh, by the machine or the machine uh, the equipment will change whether it's done by hand whether it's done by open system and the tissue is moved from one 
constant that the other or the fluid is the one which is moved but the principle remains the same so in this case the self-contained or closed fluid transfer processor uh, this quickly processes and it is followed and continued to be the most popular instrument in histology laboratories and this is for labs which can afford uh, many laboratories are not yet uh, most especially uh, in developing countries have not actually acquired uh, these machines uh, specifically like for example in Uganda we have just a, a, a handful of labs which can actually afford to have these tissue processors they are still very expensive and uh, many laboratories are not actually using them but they are using the open system uh, or the deep and dunk at least they use them and uh, yeah they do the work as well so a microprocessor uh, based control system is used in this case to program the instrument and multiple programs can be created and saved so with the microprocessor we may not need notches to be made in the disk like we saw on the open system or the deep and dunk but a microprocessor can be programmed and it can control a variety of programs including the time you need to spend in delaying all this can be um, programmed on a microprocessor and can be done automatically you may not need any reprogramming uh, but it can be set all all whatever you need to set on the machine can be on a microprocessor programmed very well and it can uh, manage all the different programs of the instrument it will determine when to transfer the fluid from the processing chamber and pump in another fluid the time all can be done by a microprocessor and this is advancement in technology so the processing reagent are pumped sequentially in and out of the retort chamber uh, where the tissue cassettes are loaded and this greatly reduces exposure uh, to solvent vapors compared to when the tissue is going to be moved out of the beaker and then transferred there's a lot of exposure to vapors and it is more safer using the closed system than the open system or even the manual method so the machine consists of almost uh, about 14 reagent bottles or stations and uh, this we can look at them and number one we have bottle one which contains formalin and this is mostly used during the delay mechanism we talked about this uh, in our previous presentation and then we have bottle two to six these ones have increasing concentrations of alcohol and these are the hydrants you remember we said we begin with a lower concentration going upward still we read absolute alcohol and then bottle three is where we have I mean bottle 7 to 10 this we have xylene for clearing so somebody may be wondering and asking why is it that in the open system we had two uh, changes of xylene and here we have three so we can customize the operation of uh, our labs that's why we need to always develop our standard operating procedures on the, in different labs so uh, we can have three we can have two or sometimes depending on the availability and the time that is going to be spent in the in xylene in the first change we may even have one and again again we look at the volume how many tissues are we putting in the zone. so the number of factors so depending on the workload of the lab and depending uh, on the resources of the lab and the other factors the lab can develop its own procedure and uh, it as well as it can be quality controlled and proved to be working it can be and so what we only need to understand is the principle and the procedures and not to cram what uh, the other lab does or anything like that what you only need to do is to understand the procedure and have the principle and then number four we have bottles from 11 to 14 and these ones contain paraffin wax for infiltration or for impregnation of the tissue and you remember in the previous discussion we talked about the open system or the deeper dark we had two uh, paraffin uh, bath so here we are having three of them still it does the same work and the same process at the end of the day we want to impregnate and remove the water from the tissue 
So we continue looking at the same, I mean the specimen processing chamber, and this is where uh, the cassette basket is placed. So the cassettes are placed in one position, and this is where the different fluids are going to be pumped in and out. The cassettes will not move, the tissue will not move, it will be, or the basket will not move, it will remain there. So we have the cassette basket, this is where the cassettes uh, containing the tissues are placed. So this basket, depending on the size and the type of the machine, but in most of the machines, uh, this, uh, this cassette basket can actually contain about 300 cassettes. They can be put in there and processed at a single time. So it also has the sealing gasket and this provides airtight conditions such that when the vacuum is created, it is maintained. If you are, I, I believe you have seen the gasket, for those people who have seen driven cars, looked at a flask, there's that rubber which is always put uh, at the door windows and doors when you're closing to make it airtight. And even the flask, when you, you close, there's that rubber at, uh, at the mouth of the flask. So that's what we call a gasket. So it helps to create a vacuum and creates an airtight condition that when you close, no more air is going to flow in or come out for that case. So it also has one or two charcoal filter bottles and here the purpose of the charcoal filters which contain charcoal pellets, they are used actually to trap fumes uh, from the processing fluids and, and reduces exposure of these fluids to a person operating so it is more safer because it has a system where these fumes can actually be absorbed. So we still also have the two system uh, cleaning solution containers and this is what we call the purge agent. It's a cleaning solution. So one bottle contains xylene or, or each substitute, and the second one contains 100% ethyl propan, uh, propyl alcohol. And the purpose of this are for cleaning. Uh, like for example, you need to clean the chamber or the processing chamber, teach processing chamber. After the teach processing is actually done very well, you have removed your cassettes. You remember the last procedure is impregnation so wax is going to be pumped into the processing chamber and you know uh, the, the characteristics of wax under low temperatures it can solidify and still to maintain a good uh, processing environment we need to clean so the purging reagents are going to be pumped uh, into the processing chamber at the end and they will actually clean. Uh, so isopropyl alcohol and xylene actually help so much <clears throat> in cleaning up the, uh, the tissue processing chamber and do away with the, the excesses or the remaining of uh, the wax which would have remained in the processing chamber. <clears throat> So again, we have the wax heating chamber, and just like we, we, we hear the names go, wax heating chamber, the purpose is actually to heat up and melt wax. Wax is not molten at room temperature, so it has to be uh, heated to a certain temperature before it melts, and it is when it is molten that it can be used properly in impregnation. So where wax bottles are placed, that's where we have the wax heating chamber. And the chamber maintains a constant temperature, consistent with the temperature required for waxes during the process. Like for example, it keeps wax in a molten state so that it can actually be effectively used to impregnate the tissue. Uh, we have uh, the filling port also, and uh, this is for automatic filling of the reagent bottles. We may not need actually to open uh, up the machine to fill, but you can attach uh, the, the tubes for a specific reagent or for a specific fluid that you want to fill. And using uh, the programmed system on the machine, this is a fully automatic machine, you can choose which reagent you want to fill, and then you attach a tube on the container containing, like for example, if it's formalin, and then you attach it to the filling port, and then you command the machine to fill automatically and to pump the fluid from the container like for example formalin and to fill the container inside the machine automatically and then we have also the draining port and this automatically uh, drains the reagent bottles 
because if you want to input the reagent, uh, because once uh, the, 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 these fluids are pumped into the fluid, some are pumped back, but after some time, you are depending on how you have set your machine, the quality control system you have set, and the policies of the lab that you have set, you need to uh, remove the old reagents or the reagents which have been overused so you can drain off these bottles containing reagents automatically by using the draining port instead of opening up the machine simply to remove the reagent so the draining port can be used so processing time uh, time temperature and all pressure this can be customized for each solvent and this can be uh, automatically set on the machine using the interface of the teach professor processor you can determine uh, for those who are at the university and I actually encourage all of you to go to the lab you go to the lab and have uh, an experience of how these tissue processors actually work we it's not always good to only look at the images here but you need to have hands on because our profession is hands on so you need to practically look at how and maybe uh, participate in operating of this machine so that you can know and appreciate how good they are so the processor employ an alarm system and the diagnostic programs for troubleshooting and instrument malfunctioning so just like we saw the alarm on the open system machine even here we have an alarm system when it finishes it can actually uh, make an alarm to inform you that the process has come to an end or if there is any diagnostic problem uh, or yeah a diagnostic problem or processing problem which has happened or any malfunction which has happened in the machine along with the process it will actually make an alarm and highlight what the problem is or help you to do the trap shooting and find out when you hear the alarm what the problem could actually B. So newer instruments have uh, divided the retorts which allow the different programs to run simultaneously and improving utilization of the equipment and providing opportunity to divide the tissue by size and on the same time. So most of the machines which are on market that we, uh, we find in our labs, they don't have the system. But uh, newer, just like uh, we are reading here, newer technology has come into place but for most of the automatic machines that we have that we are using once they have started we have to wait until uh, the process is over before we can either start another process but here now we need to appreciate the advent of technology that with the new equipment now coming out we can now run two parallel programs on the same machine and maybe have to different sets of tissues being processed at the same time and this will actually improve on the turnaround time instead of waiting for the uh, the first set program to complete and then you load another one so we have uh, an image of um, we have a picture here of the automatic tissue processor so we need to appreciate that it has a screen and this screen in most cases is a touch screen which will display the different uh, commands and then it has the navigation buttons button is here and the commands which can be used to make yes we have the keypad the keypad can be automatic i mean it can be on the screen which is a touch screen and then also we have the stainless steel retort here and we know we appreciate when we talk about the stainless uh, it is easy to clean and most of the time this uh, anti corrosive so we have a basket for this case for the type of this machine this basket can take in 200 to 300 yes for this size it can take 200 but we can see this machine where we have 300 actually for the machine i have used at cancer institute it takes up 300 cassettes at the same time so this is the basket or the tissue basket where the cassettes will be put and here we can load 200 to 300 uh, cassettes so we have also the paraffin bath reservoir and the paraffin bath reservoir this is where paraffin wax is going to be kept and 
when time for impregnation is, has reached these are heated and wax becomes molten uh, so that it can be able to uh, penetrate the tissue during the process of impregnation so we have the wax uh, drainage ports they are around uh, the arrow comes and points here this is where depending on the type of the machine I don't want to limit the only that is fixed here because there are different manufacturers of the machine so it could be located somewhere but what you only need to know that there is a wax drainage machine and then we have the reagent bottle these are reagent bottles and they will be loaded on the machine just like you're seeing these arrangements here and this is how they appear uh, including the reservoir that's how they appear and that's how they will be loaded on the machine so this is basically uh, a fluid transfer processor so once cassettes are put in this basket they will be loaded on the tissue processing chamber which is here this is the tissue processing chamber here we can see it here and then we can also see it here so now the different fluids will be pumped in and out this chamber depending on the step which is coming next like for example if you are starting with number one which is formalin so formalin will be pumped in here for a specific period of set time and then pumped out and then we shall have alcohol pumped in it also be pumped out then we shall have xylene in and out but when the tissue is in the same place it will not move because uh, this is a fluid transfer processor just like the name says so we also have the microwave processor and uh, this is uh, where the enclosed tissue processor have the option of adding heat to the chamber to warm the solvent from any station so most of this automatic uh, delay technology machine like uh, this closed system that like the machine I've used at Cancer Institute it has the micro oven I mean the microwave processor which enables heating of these fluids when they are pumped in the processing chamber you remember last time we said that if we need uh, to accelerate or to improve on the tissue processing heat is very important so having the micro wave processor uh, improves the processing uh, of the tissue so microwaves however uh, which are present on the newer process model they generate heat almost instantaneously and this is much more faster than the heat condition alone so this is very important during our tissue processing so the longer tissue the longer the tissue is exposed to the heat the greater the changes and I mean the chances of producing heat artifacts so these machines have been set uh, and the technology has been said that it does not actually continuously produce heat continuously throughout the process but it will produce heat intermittently like for example here we are saying irregular staining partners may actually come excessive hematoxin staining and dry tissues may happen when the tissue is over exposed to heat so what happens is in this microwave is that the tissue processors are not equivalent to a standard kitchen model with one off cycle which uh, vary in length depending on the cooking time and the power setting but for this it will always come on and go off and not continuously expose the tissue to same temperatures so for micro processors these use shorter cycle times which are consistent regardless of the programmed time they will use shorter times to avoid exposing the tissue to longer periods of heat which may actually result in cooking or burning out of the tissue so this uh, this correct use of microwave during tissue processing can shorten the processing times without actually producing heat artifacts so what are the advantages of using new technology in the processing one uh, custom programs specific to tissue being processed like addition of vacuum pressure agitation or heat uh, at any stage are uh, possible when we use these advanced technologies secondly it is rapid uh, and it, it, it reduces on the turnaround time and this is very good for a patient who is waiting to receive results 
fluid and fume containment is possible you remember we had charcoal uh, some of the containers having the charcoal pellets which actually absorb some of the fumes and they protect the user from direct exposure and that's very important so time delay for uh, start of process schedules is possible so if you're not going to be there and you need to start uh, your process and you estimate that maybe I'm not going to be around for uh, maybe I, I will come late you can let the process and this can be programmed on the machine you delay for certain hours or for certain minutes depending on the program you have and it can be kept in formalin for some time then the process of continuing to process continues later so these machines also uh, come with the reagent management and the volume reduction so you can program uh, your machines to automatically to manage the reagent for you if they have been overused yes a signal will be sent an alarm can be made on the screen and you'll indicate that the, the reagent have been overused the reagent are now deteriorated the volume has gone low without basically opening the machine to check so they have the automatic system in reagent management they have an internal quality control system which can help you to ensure quality so we need to know now how we maintain these processes because if we don't maintain them well then they may get spoiled and yet they are very expensive to acquire and that will not be very good for, for a lab so every laboratory should have a policy outlining the rotation and the changing of solutions on the tissue processor so in as much as this some of these automatic processors have the automatic system it is you to set the programming they don't set the program for you but you have to set according to your policy that according to the policy of this lab we shall be changing our reagent after every week so you send i mean you set the number of days that you want the reagent to run for so when those days elapse that's when the machine will notify you about the elapse of the set days that you have to change the reagent so the number size and type of the tissue processed and the reagents used will play a role in determining this policy so what happens if for, like for example for some of these machines you can set uh, how many cassettes or how many tissues do you want to process but it is always better to count the number of cassettes because these machines will count the number of cassettes so for example you can set like uh, you want to run probably 3000 cassettes and after 3000 cassettes uh, we have to change the reagents so whenever you enter or whenever you load the cassettes to process you enter the number of cassettes you have entered and you'll be adding 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 and that when the number comes the number that you set in the machine that you wanted for example you have set 3000 cassettes when the number clocks 3000 then it will give you a notification that you need to change the solution yes continuing solution it should be carefully monitored to ensure quality so when you look at uh, some of these reagents these bottles are translucent you can sometimes look at the quality you look at these reagents and see they can change color so if you see a, a fluid which was colorless and has turned yellow or brown then you know the quality is not good and every manufacturer has a handbook outlining an appropriate maintenance schedule that every lab should have and follow the standard operating procedures or follow the manual for properly maintaining uh, the equipment so what are some of the tips that you have to look at away from those other detailed ones so you have to make sure that any spillage or overflow should be cleaned and this makes you even to have your worker station tidy you shouldn't use a machine which is littered and which is soiled by every kind of that so you need to maintain your machine clean and tidy so whenever you see any spillage please clean it accumulation of wax on the surface should be removed immediately so when the wax spills at least you get a, a warm tissue you warm the tissue because wax when it lands on the surface it will solidify and it may be hard to remove but you can get warm tissue and use it to clean the surface of the machine 
and it will good. So paraffin wax bath temperature should be monitored because we need to ensure proper impregnation. So when wax is not molten well, so it will not uh, penetrate the tissue very well and we may not achieve uh, the impregnation we, we, we want. And still, even when it is overheating, it will instead uh, cook our tissue and not uh, actually impregnate it, but we need it impregnated. Warm water, uh, here we need to consider the manufacturer's recommendation solution. Flushes should be performed regularly to keep the lines free of salts and this will help you to maintain your machine well because when you don't clean the tubes well they may have things piling in there, they corrode and they may end up getting blocked. So let's look at uh, the troubleshooting as we come closer to the conclusion. So troubleshooting, how do you troubleshoot? So when you see precipitate in the processor chamber and in the tubing, what could be the problem? So this could be caused uh, when the phosphate buffer formally is used for fixation and then dehydrating begins at 70 uh, with alcohol or higher. So it can also be caused when the pH of zinc formally is greater than 7.0 uh, then the precipitate will be in the tissue and make the microtome difficult and make a microtome difficult. So this can be prevented by beginning dehydration with lesser than or equal to 65% of alcohol, just in case you note you note that, and ensuring that the pH of zinc formalin solution remains at 7.0 strictly. And removing the precipitate by rinsing the chambers and the tubing with dilute solution of 5% to 20% acetic acid to dissolve whatever could be clogged in the tubes. So, what happens is when you realize you are over dehydrating, how do you troubleshoot? So, this could be caused when the tissue stays for longer in the dehydrating solution, which leads for formation of uh, micro chatters around the edges of the tissue on H and E extended sections. So you, a lot of things need to be, it could be uh, human negligence or absence when this, when you're using probably a manual machine and you, you're not there to monitor or you, you actually you're operating manually and the tissue takes uh, ends up being in the dehydrant for so long or when your timer with your system uh, on your automatic system has challenges, your timer is not set well, or it has a problem, needs to be rectified. So, in this case, better always to have the engineers to come and set your timer very well so that appropriate times can be set. So, this can be prevented by processing biopsy tissues separately from larger tissues. Uh, carefully controlling time for dehydration and decreasing the time allowed in hydrating solution. So, it is always good to do quality control you are assess your dehydrating reagent or chemical you see how long it needs for it to give you uh, good dehydrating uh, times and uh, results so poor processing what could be the cause this could be caused by poor dehydrating which results into poor clearing and inf infiltration and consequently this results into poor nuclear staining on H and E Stained sections. So the section is you're going to get uh, as good as the process you are taking them through, and still the results you get will be as good as the tissue you have processed or the process you have taken it uh, through. So it can be caused by improper quality control of the processor, improper clearing of tissue, and too much heat used during processing, or mechanical problems with the processor but this can be prevented by one ensuring that no condensation occurs in the processor with either the fixative or alcohol droplets uh, dropping on the tissue and then two by ensuring that the absolute alcohol does not actually absorb water or become diluted because we need it to really be at a concentration desired enough to remove the water and three, we need to ensure that there is, uh, there are no mechanical problems with the processor. Now, like for example, we talked about the notch. If there are any mechanical problems with the motion or with the movement or the mo moving parts, it may even 
uh, take longer to move from the flat surface in the deep and dark processor on its timer to reach the notch and it may end up spending a lot of time in either the dehydrant or the clearing agent and this may cause a lot of artifacts. So next we need to ensure that uh, a good schedule of reagent rotation is developed and maintained for those uh, reagents which have been overused and we assume they are now uh, not effective as they should have been, they should be changed. And lastly, using heat only for infiltration and not using it in other processes because this may lead to cooking. So, in case you have gotten some challenges, uh, some of the mistakes actually done away with, how would we restore a tissue dried during processes? So, if we realize that you over dried or it has over stayed in alcohol, how then do we bring it back? So, despite the precaution is taken during processing, technical or mechanical malfunctions and human error may occur, which may result into tissue drying out prior to paraffin wax impregnation. So, if you've been able to realize this, what you do? So, tissue restoration can be accomplished by placing the tissue in formal glycer solution for 5 to 10 hours. While the tissue may not be ideal because of those other mistakes which have been made, they could interfere with some morphological changes and some elements of interest. This may provide slides of adequate diagnostic quality and so you can go on and analyze the slides. So here the processing begins with the dehydrating uh, solution and then it continues to completion. So you repeat the process, you start with the dehydrating and then you continue and afresh and then you process your uh, your slides as, uh, as a new one. So reprocessing of poorly processed paraffin wax infiltrated specimen, how do you do? You realize you have already processed uh, your tissue, it is even paraffin impregnated. So how do you do? Is there a way out? Yes. How do we do it? Then we melt down the excess wax and we process normally beginning in the fixative. So we remove the wax uh, with the wax. How do you de wax this? We can de wax using temperature, using heat if that if that case, or we can use uh, xylene to remove uh, the wax. We can use the, 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 the we can use but the most appropriate method is actually actually the most appropriate method of the waxing using heat to melt off the uh, the wax you remove the wax and then use you hydrate and you fix and then you continue processing your tissue very well so correctly processed tissue will be protected from over processing uh, by the residue wax waste under processed areas remain exposed and will have a second chance of dehydration just in case they were not dehydrated properly so we can't finish this without looking at quality control and in this temperature of all paraffin wax dispensers needs to be monitored and uh, temperature of the flotation bath and the automatic automated processors are carefully monitored maintained and documented aha uh -huh. a hydrometer can be used to measure the specific gravity Quadrative density of alcohols to ensure that they are their appropriate specific densities. That's when they will only be effective. And then in the storage battery should have a policy and a procedure manual which addresses quality uh, issues and the corrective action is to be taken. And this also will make everything very wonderful. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, we can use these references to read more just in case you want to continue reading and i want to thank you for uh, watching these tutorials and uh, i encourage you to uh, keep liking them sharing share with people so that they can also benefit from whatever we have shared and don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe so that next time when i 
uh, share a new tutorial, a new video, you'll be able to see it as soon as it comes in. Otherwise, thank you for listening. I wish you the best of your time. Bye for now.